who you think. My name is Trey Verdejo. I represent the old school. And I'm Destin Verdejo, and I represent the new wave. All right, all right. So got a lot to talk about, man. A lot of things been going on in the sports world. But before we get started, um, let's talk about our sponsor, Footage Society, one of the hottest sneaker boutiques in the whole DMV. Um, you can find them at 509 Main Street, Suite B, Laurel, Maryland. And you can also call them at 301-483-3668. Give them that number again. Give them that number again. Once again, that's 301-483-3668. And you can also go to the website, www.fittersociety.com. All right. That's what's up. And also, don't forget, man, if you visit their website, you can get a 10% discount, man, by mentioning who you think. So whether you visit the website or check them out at the store, when you walk in, just mention the show, Who You Think Sports, and you get 10% discount off your merchandise. And also, they're running a big sale for Cyber Monday, man. You might be able to get something right now. So just go on their website and check them out for today, all right? And again, that's Footage Society, F-O-O-T-A. G E S society.com. All right. Now, quick update on our fantasy league. Who you think sports? We got our own fantasy league and um want to give you guys an update. Right now, well, we, we gotta see what happens with tonight's game. But come tomorrow morning, it could be three of us tied um for first place. So our team, uh, my niece down in Florida, her team, and then I got a brother from Baltimore, Mike. Um, he's right there as well. So it all depends what happened with Mike's team. And if he wins, then we all be on a tie way for first place. So we'll keep y'all updated who's going to make it to the playoff and who will win the championship for the first off, um, who you think, Fantasy League. All right, so that's what we got going on. What's the top five for this week, champ? Um, top five rivalries. Top five sports rivalry, all right? Um, you know, college um, basketball this past weekend was a big rivalry week. Um, so we wanted to go with that with that theme. So this week, top five would be sports robbery. Give us your top five sports robbery, and we'll give you our top five by the end of the show, all right? So don't forget to mention your top five sports robbery in sports. It could be team sports or one-on-one. You know, a lot of people have robberies playing one-on-one. I'm not sure, I'm, you know, my tennis fans out there, you know, it was a couple robberies in tennis sport. All right, and even more well, boxing. I don't know if you could call it a rivalry, but it been a couple of people that fought against each other a couple of times. But we'll share ours, and you know, you guys share yours. If I see them before the show's over, I'll mention them. All right. Oh, so before we get started, man, Sunday, you know, I was watching a little bit of football. I, I stepped out, came back home, and I was about to watch the um, the Rams in the Saint game, and then I noticed on Fox uh, it says something about. 89 blocks a movie i'm like a documentary a sports documentary and usually i stay on top of these things and i was like man i haven't heard of this sports documentary yo i'm telling you right now everybody watching it you have to watch this documentary it was produced by lebron james and some other people but Le lebron james got his hands on it um it's called 89 blocks so what they did was they follow a high school team out in st louis um football team and you know pretty much follow from game one all the way to state championship and it it talks about you know players off and off the field problems and all the struggles that they go through and how players mess up their scholarship and what you need to do to get a scholarship all sorts of stuff man it was one of the best document sports documentaries i have watched in a very long time and again it's called 89 blocks i want to give them a shout out for those who's watching, man, make sure you check that documentary out. And if you got kids who are into sports, make sure they watch it as well. All right? It's definitely one of those must-watch. And also, boxing update. I know last week we talked a little bit about boxing. We talked about how the sport of boxing is kind of dying a little bit. And there was some fights this weekend, but a bunch of nobody. I did see Gamboa won, um, but the fight that I want to mention that just got signed um, that's going to happen on January 20th is Spence Jr. versus Lamont Peterson. January 20th is going down in New York. I believe that's the Barclay, uh, but it's going down in New York January 20th. That's going to be a very, very good fight. And just speaking of that and just talking about boxing, it just came in my mind as I was thinking about it. 
Where is Danny Garcia? Who he fought last again? Um, the dude with the ponytail? Nate Thurman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He fought Thurman. Thurman, I mean, he didn't really beat his ass, but it was Danny Garcia first loss. But I haven't heard from him, man. So, Danny Garcia, man, we're looking for you. What's going on? Talk to us. All right. <laughs> so, what we moving on to next? Uh, football and Fo- rivalries. Okay, and okay. Upsets. All right, so college football. So who you think own the best rivalry in college football? All right, so that's where the top five thing come from. And there was a couple games this past weekend, right? Mm-hmm. Um, some good ones, you know. So we want we want to highlight some of those. The one that stuck out to me, the, well, it was a couple. I ain't even gonna say one, but it was a couple. But um, Ohio State versus Michigan. Man, it was a hell of a game. Third quarter, Ohio State was down. Their quarterback gets injured. They bring in a ref, uh, red shirt freshman. All right. His name was Dwayne Haskins. Haskins. He came in and showed off, came back, and they won 31 20. So big up to Ohio State. Um, Michigan, even though they lost, for some strange reason, they still alive in the playoffs. It all depends on. This next um, rivalry I'm about to talk about, which is Alabama and Auburn. Everybody had Alabama, including me. Auburn just did their thing. Now, what really messed up on the game was fourth quarter, about three minutes left, Alabama kept making a lot of mental mistakes, a lot of mental mistakes, man. So that's pretty much what happens, and Auburn beat them, and now Alabama – even though they only have one loss, they're in jeopardy of not being in the college playoffs at all. And Michigan might be able to sneak in there real quick. So we're going to keep an eye on that and see what happens. A um, couple other more robberies. Ole Miss versus Missi- uh, Mississippi State. Ole Miss um, pulled the upset, 31-28. Another one that was a little surprising was Pittsburgh beating the University of Miami. The U. And they lost 24-14. So pretty much their chances might be done for the playoffs. So it's a lot of rivalries going on this past um, weekend in college football. Uh, we keep you guys in, in, in tag what's going on within the next week or so. Now that all these ball games are about to happen and see who's going to be the four top teams um, in the college playoffs, man. So we'll see what's going on. What we got next there? Um, who do you think was winners of Week 12? And NFL football. So what you think? Um, everyone wanted to see Dallas versus the Chargers, but the Chargers end up beating the Cowboys 28 to 6. Whoa, whoa. Who? What was the score? 28 to 6. 28 to huh? Six. To six? Dallas? Dallas? Y'all only scored six points? Mm-mm. I watched the game. I'm not even gonna lie to you. And that's, that was the game everybody wanted to watch on Thursday. You know, Thursday's a big football day. Um, the Detroit game was, was okay. But, you know, and then the Giants played the rest games. I mean, pfft, nobody was going to watch that. I ain't even watch that game, and I'm a Giant fan. Dallas against Chargers. We wanted to see what Dallas was going to do when they was up against the wall, and they folded. Folded big time, man. And everybody keep talking about Dallas this, Dallas that, Dallas this. All you Dallas Cowboy fans, I just got one last statement, and I'm going to leave the Cowgirls alone. In the past 20-plus years, you guys only made it to how many playoff games? I don't know how many they made, but they only won two. Well, yeah, they only won two. two. Well, I don't even know if they won. Made it to the – well, no, yeah, they won two. But y'all made it to the playoffs a couple more times. But in the past 20-plus years – Y'all only won two playoff games, man. Two playoffs? <laughs> All right. I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna let y'all slide. All right, what else? Oh, okay. Eagles. They still looking strong. They still looking strong. What was the final score on that one? 31 to 3. Ooh, 31 to 3. Uh, who they beat? The Bears. The Bears. I mean, it started a little interesting. A little like the Bears was gonna do a little something, something, but everybody knows Eagles, man. I'm telling you. you think, they can, think they can make it to the Super Bowl? I think right now it might be, it might be 
Patriots versus the Eagles. I hate the Patriots. I can't stand the Patriots. Well, I ain't gonna say I can't stand them, but I'm just I'm tired of the same old teams going back, you know what I mean, to the um Super Bowl. To the Super Bowl. Some other teams that might be there. We're gonna talk about Pittsburgh in a little bit, but it looked like from coming out of the East, the Eagles might be a lock, but the Eagles still gotta play Atlanta, I think. Um and Atlanta's looking a little better right now. You know what I mean? Talking about Atlanta, um, they won. Who else? Panthers took care of business um, against the 20, Jets. 35-27. 35-27 against the Jets. Um, Cam's still not looking that good, though. But they win in games. Um, they got their tight end back, but then he got hurt again. So they top receivers out. Um, so we'll see. We'll keep our eyes on the Panthers. I just can't roll the dice on them just yet. Um, I don't got my money on them, so I'm not buying. Um, who else? Who else? Patriots. We already talked about them. They beat the Dolphins. And Buffalo beats the Dying Chiefs. Buffalo beat who? The Chiefs. But what you said before that? The Chiefs. Oh, the Dying Chiefs. The Dying Chiefs. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I heard that. Now, I remember when we first started the show a couple weeks ago, we was all discussing. That's when um, Kansas City, I believe, was 5-0, I believe, at the time. And we was like, whoa, everybody's talking about, hey, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. And I was like, man, I don't trust that boy Alex Smith, man. I can't put my money on him, man. And now, look, they record right now is five and six, I believe. It's crazy. It feels like they lost every game since then. Yeah, <laughs> every, every game. And now I know they're putting pressure for them to put in that rookie, the home man, and, you know, that's their future. And even um, Andy Reid was like, nah, we don't, we, you know, I'm not thinking about that yet. I don't think it would be a, a good idea to bring him in right now, just finish the year off for Alex, see what happens, and then let that rookie start off next year because your line can't stop nobody. You're not running the ball. Your receivers are kind of weak. So don't put that boy in there now and destroy his confidence. Let Alex finish off the year so that way when they let him go next year, at the end of the season, he knows why. Um. He's going to get demoted. I don't know if they're going to let him go. But this is going to be the second time for Alex Smith. Remember, it happened to him in San Francisco with Cap. Cap came in, took his spot. He was a backup, and then he got traded. So can Alex still be a starting quarterback in this league? Yeah, I think so. He's better than a lot of these Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he, he, he can still be a starter, but. He needs the line like any other quarterback. Yeah. But he'd be scared to throw that ball, too, man. I'd be looking at him like, come on, throw that ball. You got one of the fastest receivers in the game. Tyreek Hill. So I don't know, but we'll keep an eye on um on the dying Chiefs, but they need to do something. Um Falcons won beating the Bucks. Julio Jones had a 253 yard and two touchdown game. Finally, finally, Julio Jones. And no other player. He has three 250 yard games in his career. No other player in NFL history has more than one. Woo! And then there was a one of his touchdowns was an incredible pass from um Sanu. Yeah, 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 yeah. That Touchdown was, pass yeah. was by another wide receiver. Yeah. And I heard was... um that um Sanu has a perfect quarterback rating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Every they, time they do a little trick play, he always complete the pass. Yeah, they say he used to play college and I mean quarterback in high school or something. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. He used to play quarterback. Oh, explains the reason why. But yeah, um Julio Jones, man, stepping up. Like I said, Atlanta now. It's looking a little dangerous. Um, they don't got their star running back, but Coleman, um, I think Coleman is the backup. He's looking pretty good as well. But let's see where Atlanta takes it. Um, I'm not going to count them out just yet coming out of the East, but I think Atlanta got a tough schedule, man. They still got to play the Saints two more times, all right, so before the season is up. And I think they play the Eagles. I'm not That's sure. Record. Yeah. Um, they record right now. I don't got it right in front of me, but. I think they like eight and four or something like that. Are they in the hunt? Oh no, no. They they lead they they they, they in the hunt. They, they, they lead the division. They lead the division because now Saints lost yesterday. Well no no, Saints are still up one game. Because Saints was only eight and two and they just lost yesterday, so they should be eight and three. So they still they in the hunt, but they still got to play the Saints two more times. Yeah. So so in other words, you guys control your own destiny. So what are you gonna do? All right, so let's see. Um, and talking about the Saints, they had a real, they had a nice, that was the game I, I really wanted to watch, but then I started watching 89 blocks. I was like, I ain't turning this TV. Um, but the Saints, 
and the Rams. Um, that was a pretty good game. I was shocked at the Rams. Um, you know, they beat them. The final score was 26-20. I thought it was a close game. I didn't think it was going to be a high-scoring game because you had two good defense playing each other. So I was I was wondering to see what was going to happen. And um can't believe, man, the quarterback for um, the Rams, man, golf, man, he's doing his thing, man. He's looking like a, a number one pick. You know what I mean? So Rams got a pretty good team out there, man. So look out for the Rams. Saints are still in there. Like I said, they're still in the hunt. Um, you know, they won eight straight and then just lost. So they're still in the hunt. They control their own destiny as well. But they got to face Atlanta two more times. So let's see. Then the game of the night was um, Steelers against um, Green Bay. And coaches should never do this. Um, I know I coached a lot of years, and I always talk about it, and I always hear it. You know, don't worry about the next game. Worry about the game in front of you. And there was an interview with Tomlin before the game started, and here he laughing, talking about the Patriots. Yeah, we play the Patriots coming up, and, you know, that game is going to be good, but it's going to be about the next game when we meet them again, talking about in the playoffs. And I'm like, hmm. So he was overlooking Packers like many of us did. Packers came in there, boy, and <laughs> they, almost, they almost stole that victory, boy. Final score was 31-28 on the last second field goal by the Steelers, but – that boy Hundley, man, was doing his thing. He was moving that pill, man. But also something happened during the game. One um Antonio Brown had that incredible sideline catch. Ooh, man. He jacked his left foot. I think it was Man, that was one of the prettiest catches I've seen in a very long time. Um, they were talking about AJ Green. It was somebody he had a nice catch um yesterday, but that Antonio Brown catch yesterday, I don't know how he was able to get that second foot in, man. So, you know. But big time players make big time plays. You know what I mean? So, and then Monday Night Football. Who you think is going to win between the Ravens and Houston? Okay. Ravens. <laughs> well, I just hope the Ravens don't go in there with the same attitude the Steelers went in there last night and overlook Houston just because Deshaun. Yeah, Missing on their kill, uh, quarterback. Yeah, they're missing their quarterback. You know, they're missing their best defensive player as well. So, you know, you, you can't sleep on a hungry team, man. Houston might come in there and sneak one. They're playing here in Baltimore. So, let's see. But I'm, I'm thinking, you know, Ravens should pull that off easily. But let's see. Let's see. All right. So, that's college football, NFL. What we got next, champ? Uh. College basketball. College basketball. All right. So, who you think is the real deal? All right. Now, I know last last week we had contenders and pretenders, right? So, here go your pretenders. Here go your contenders. All right. So, let's talk about they released a new college ranking. So, I got the top 15. Let's just, just read off the first top ten. I'll let you know whether they pretenders or contenders. Let's see. Duke. Duke. Definitely contenders, man. They looking unstoppable right now. Kansas. Um, contenders. Michigan State. Contenders. Villanova. Contenders. Cincinnati. Pretenders. Minnesota. Now, Cincinnati record is 6-0, but pretenders. Minnesota. Pretenders. Um, pretenders, maybe. pretenders, pretenders. They got big time score. <laughs> now, who? Isaiah Washington. For what? For for what team is that? Minnesota. Oh yeah, now nah. I mean Minnesota seven and zero. Oh. You know I what I mean? Know. I don't think. They but know. they rank six in the nation. I guarantee you, in a couple of weeks, they're not going to be in the top fifteen. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think they will. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they make a run for it in the. Yeah, I don't know. Now, the team that I'm surprised by is Arizona. Last week, they was number two. But they lost three in a row. They ain't even cracked the top 25. So, Arizona, y'all got a lot of problems, man. Y'all need to fix that house. Um, Texas A&M. Texas A&M, uh, I don't know too much about them, so I'm just going to give it a maybe. Notre Dame. Uh, contenders. Florida. Pretenders. Now, no, no, no. 
Well, last week, everybody was on Florida's, you know, all Florida's going to be one of the best teams. But then when they played against Duke um, last night, Duke put it on them. So let's see. So I'll say right now they they contenders, but they they roaming around that pretender field as well. Um, now, the team that I'm surprised Miami, with is Kentucky. Kentucky, they 6-1. I still think they contenders. And North Carolina, they 5-1. I still think that they contenders, but you know, let's see. They 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 lost to Michigan State yesterday. So now let's talk about the PK80 tournament that just took place. Now, for those who don't know about PK80, that's a new tournament. Um, and it's is the PK is for Phil Knight. Anybody know who Phil Knight is? That's not Bobby's nice father or brother. CEO for Nike. CEO and chairman for Nike. So they had a basketball tournament for them, um, and it was a lot of teams playing. So the final four was Duke against Florida. Duke won 87-84. And then you had North Carolina versus Michigan State, and Michigan State pulled it off 63-45. So it was some good games. Those were the final four. Now college really is going to start jumping on, so we're going to keep an eye on it and see where it goes. Anybody, um, what about um, what else happened in college? Um in a crazy game, Alabama ended up – who did they play again? I forgot. Alabama was playing – was it Minnesota, right? Was it? I don't know. I forgot. But they ended up playing three players against five when their whole bench got ejected for stepping onto the court and engaging in a brawl. And, um, and then that's when Alabama was left with five players. And then – after that, one player got fouled out, and then later, another player got injured. So now they was three on five, and Colin Sexton, one of the top high school players coming out, coming out this year, had forty points, twenty three in the second half. So that's shouts out to him. I think he's gonna be a big time player in the NBA. So Bama only had three players on the court. Yeah, and one of them being Sexton. Yeah, exactly. Against five. Yeah. And he dropped 23 points that half and total 40 for the game. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Three against five. And one of the players, they only had three players score 23 on y'all. I mean, it's real simple. Double team them. You could even triple team them. Right? So I don't know how that happened. But now another thing about college basketball, man, I want to give a big, big shout out to our cousin, um, Jojo Walker, um, freshman guard out of the University of Portland. Um, and Portland right now is on the come up. They got eight freshmen, and their head coach is Teddy Porter. Um, everybody know who Terry Porter is, one of the greatest point guards in the league. So our cousin, you know, he played for them. This is freshman year. He did pretty good. He was also in the PKM tournament. Um, he dropped nine points against North Carolina. They lost. He dropped 15 points on Oklahoma and then dropped another eight points on DePaul. So, you know, let's keep your eyes on our cousin again, JoJo Walker, University of Portland. All right, we watching you. Keep doing your thing, man. All right? So now we are going to talk about basketball. All right? So who you think is in their zone? All right? So now with basketball, we're going to do something a little different here as well. Now, we, want, we got a couple statements I'm going to read out, and I'm going to let you in. Destin here is going to let me know whether I'm buying or you're selling wolf tickets, all right? Now, for those who don't know what selling wolf tickets means, means that you're pretty much bluffing. You're pretty much putting something on the stage that nobody can see, all right? So you're selling wolf tickets. So we're going to – a couple statements I'm going to read out, and we're going to say – we're going to see what the champ thinks. I'm either buying or you're selling wolf tickets, all right? So let's start with Cleveland. Cleveland won seven in a row. You buying? Selling wolf tickets. I'm buying. Okay, I accept that. I think it's time for. I think they're just trying to turn it up now after that bad start. Yeah, I mean champions do what champions do. I mean they looking real good right now. Um, so I will take that. Now, you told me about a rumor. Who they trying to get? Uh, there was talks about Tristan Thompson for. DeAndre Jordan. Ooh, so trading Tristan Thompson for DeAndre Jordan. Now, if Cleveland was to pull that trade off, 
I definitely would give Cleveland number one all the way. You, you bring DeAndre Jordan to Cleveland, and he control that paint down there, blocking everything, getting all rebounds, and just catching alley-oops and just dunking all over the place, that, that, that would be pretty significant. So, all right, I'll give you that. All right, next one. Boston leading the Eastern Conference. You buying or selling wolf tickets? Um, Meaning that they're going to finish the top. No, I don't think that. Selling the wolf top. tickets? I don't think they'll finish at the top. So you don't think they're the best team in the East right now? No, I think it's still Cleveland. Still Cleveland? Yeah. Is it because of the way Cleveland is playing right now? Yeah. Okay. I, overall, I think the talent level in Cleveland is uh, better. So there's a lot of talk about Boston. Eh? There's a lot of talk about um, Brown, their guard. So what you think about Brown? Is he an all-star talent right now? I don't know if he'll make the All-Star this year, but eventually, yeah, I think he will. I think he's nah, a I the question player. I asked you. Is he an All-Star player right now? No. That's what they're talking about. No. Uh, so, selling Wolf tickets on that one? Yeah, leading. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's decent. I mean, it's his second year, but I, I agree with you. Down the road, he definitely should be an All-Star type player, but he's stepping up, Um, you know, filling in that void. Um, So, but I agree with you. Um, will Boston finish in the top? I'm actually buying that. I think Boston will lead the league. Um, now, will they win the championship? That's something else. But coming out of the East with the best record, I think Boston right now has the best chance. But let's see. Like you said, Cleveland right now, they're on the rise. So let's see. How about Houston leading the Western Conference? Buying, selling wolf tickets. I don't think they're going to. Selling think, wolf tickets. I don't Woo! think they're going to be leading the conference by the end of the season. No? Nah? So you think the Warriors? Yeah. But I do, but I am buying James Harden for MVP. <laughs> I'm buying James Harden for MVP. So you are buying James Harden for MVP. Leading the league in total points, points per game, total assists, and assists per game. Whoa, whoa, hold on. That's a lot of categories. Explain yourself. Total points, like overall points. Huh? Like, no, I don't know that. All but... counted up. Okay. This season, points per game. This season, total assists. This season, assists per game. This season, he's all leading in that category. So you saying right here, because I want to make sure the camera gets you. You saying that James Harden is going to finish the season, averaging the most points and the most assists. I mean that. I didn't say he's going to finish with that. I said that's what he's doing right now. Oh, come on, man. You got to make it interesting. Is he or not? You think he's going to leave both categories by the end of the season? Um, I think he'll finish with leading in assists, maybe not points. But I do. I still think he'll be top three in points. Oh, okay, okay. He's, he's, he's backing out out of his but statement, y'all. He's MVP. backing out out of his statement. But I think he'll be MVP. MVP? Because yeah, there's a couple players because still. Because he came in second place. Last year? And uh, against Stephen Curry when he won it. Okay. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. All right. Um, Grizzlies lost eight straight. Okay. So are you buying that they're a bad team or they're selling wolf tickets? They, could, they should be a better, a, better, a better team than what they are. Um, I don't think they're that bad. So selling wolf tickets? Yeah, but at the same time, they're still pretty bad from so buying it. You buy? <laughs> I think they're like ten C. He like this, going I, up and down, I weighing think, my options. I think they're ten C. I don't think the way they're playing, they're playing like a like a Mavericks. But right, I don't. I think they around like ten C. Okay, I mean That's they lost the eight straight, and it hasn't been officially announced, but. Bleacher Report is putting out there that they just fired their head coach. Fisdale. How do you feel about that? I don't, I don't think they should have fired him. Are you shocked? Yeah, because they, first of all, the, the talent on the team is not really that great. They lost a lot of pieces. I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but can you name the starting five players for the Grizzlies? Mike Conley. Mike Conley. Aaron. Aaron Harrison, one of the Harrison twins. One of the Harrison twins. I don't know the small forward. 
Well, I think Chandler Parsons, but I think he comes off the bench. I think Parsons comes off the bench. Jermichael Green and Mark as well. And there's one missing. I didn't I didn't name the small for it. I said I didn't know the small for it. Right. So that's the thing. They they really don't got that much talent. Yeah, they got they got a lot of nobodies. But I am surprised that they fired a coach, man, Fisdale. I mean, he, he finished strong last year in the playoffs when they made that run. I mean, the whole community in Memphis was loving this guy. But they lost eight straight. Um, Gasol didn't even play the whole fourth quarter last night. And he was flipping out. Well, he was flipping out, but he was confused. He ain't know why. So when you lose eight straight and you got your star, one of your star players, you know, complaining or not playing or don't know what's going on. Something like this could happen, but I am very shocked that they did fire him. Um, if that report is true, um, he only been there a year and some change. He, they didn't even give his brother a chance. So something must have happened behind the scenes we don't know about yet that I'm sure will come out in a few days and we'll give you guys an update what happened there. All right. Next statement Magic lost eight straight. Are you buying or are they selling wolf tickets? I'm buying. I'm buying. I think, yeah. they, I think, I think they're selling wolf tickets when they was winning. <laughs> <laughs> we were shocked. I ain't even going to lie to you. I'm sitting there watching them. I'm like, okay, okay. I see Orlando doing their thing, winning some games here and there. But then now they're starting to come to reality. They didn't lost eight straight already. So I agree with you. I'm buying. That's, that's a bad team. All right. Now, Dallas winning two in a row. You buying or are they selling wolf tickets? Selling wolf tickets. Selling wolf tickets? I don't think they're that good. You don't think they're that good? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little shocked, man. I, I I really, really, really was pulling for Dallas, man. Not to, you know, be one of the best teams coming out of the West, but I they have good players. You know, you still got Dirk. You got Barrera. You got... um. Harrison, Barnes. You, uh, Harrison Barnes, you got that rookie. What's his name again? Um, Dennis, Smith. Dennis Smith, which, you know, I love him. You know, they got a pretty decent bench. They got your boy uh, from Philly. They just got traded, Noel. Um, you know, I'm so – Dallas, you know, they got a good coach. They got a hell of a coach. Maybe just the conference that the Western Conference is tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Western Conference is tough, but a lot of t- teams was having tough years. So there's really no reason for there's, there's no excuse for them to be that bad. So, but I I agree with you. I am buying that they are a bad team. So let's see what happens. Now this one here, if the playoffs started right now, Oklahoma City would not be in the playoffs. Are you buying or selling wolf tickets? Meaning that they may not even make it to the playoffs. Selling wolf tickets. Selling wolf tickets. They definitely make the playoffs. They just need to get it together. Okay. They're not consistent. Paul George, when they lost to Dallas, 97 to 81, only 35 points in the first half. Paul George only had two points. Unacceptable. And Melo had zero assists. And we just talked we just talked about how bad Dallas is. And you just said, well, they're playing a tough conference. But they beat OKC. Oklahoma City, man. I read, or let me ask you another question. Tell me if you buying or selling wolf tickets on this one. Carmelo Anthony, that's a curse. Meaning they just can't win. Whatever team he goes, they just don't win. You buying that or selling wolf tickets? Mm. It's a tough one, right? I'm selling wolf tickets. Selling wolf tickets. Yeah, I, I'm not going to sit here and blame Melo for the losses right now with OKC. Because I, he did take the Nuggets to the conference finals. Yeah, and year. and with the Knicks, I know everybody blamed him for the Knicks not winning all those years. I don't really put all the blame on him, but it's starting to feel or look like, man, wherever he goes, it's like teams start losing. Um but I think it's more than just, you know, Carmelo Anthony, like you said, Paul George scoring two points. Um, I just think they they, they got to get their chemistry together, man. They really got to turn it around fast before they put themselves in a real big hole and don't even make it out of the West. There's it's too many good teams in the West for them to be playing like this. They mess around, don't make it to the playoffs. Now, let me ask you this side question. If OKC didn't don't make it to the playoffs, would, this, would that be a disappointment? 
this for season? Sure. For sure. Definitely. That, that, that gotta, to me, that got to be like one of the biggest letdowns in sports history. Just like um, the Lakers. Yeah, well, we'll talk about the Lakers in a second. I got... I'm talking about when they had uh, Kobe, Dwight, Steve Nash. Oh, Chicago okay. Oh, I thought you was comparing to this current Laker team. I'm like, oh, no. it's not the same talent. No. Okay, I got you. I got you. So that, you know, it's very interesting. So, you know, we're going to keep an eye on OKC. Now, can the Wizards survive losing war for the next two weeks? Are you buying or are they selling wolf tickets? Um, I don't think they can survive. Because they're all, right now they're already out of the playoff hunt. Right now they are out of the playoff hunt. And that bottom, the bottom is going to be tough. Bucks, who's, who else is down there? Box is down there. Uh, Sixes is down. Well, no, Sixes got a like, better record. Yeah, they like four. Yeah, I believe you I got, got that here. Yeah. Okay. Is, what is you, all you got? Eastern Conference and West. Nah, I just got the rankings. Oh, Pacers, the Heat, the Knicks. So yeah, it's a lot of teams down there, man. So. We'll, we'll see. So you think they, they won't be able to survive? No. Meaning they'll put themselves in a bigger hole? Yeah. All right, Wizards, man. Let's see, man. I think they got enough talent for to at least go 500 without them. But let's see. That means Porter, you know, Bill. Oubre. They, yeah, Oubre. They all got to step up, man. The Morris. Morris brother's still there, right? One of the Morris brothers still yeah, there? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they all got to step up, man. So let's see. Um, what, uh, what about talking about Pistons? Pistons. Are you buying or are they selling wolf tickets? Because right now on ESPN rankings, they got them um, six. Are you buying or are they selling wolf tickets? Selling wolf tickets. Selling wolf tickets? Explain. Um, I just don't think in crunch time they, they got that big time player. Pistons? Yeah. Drummond, he's good, but... What about that boy Harris? Tobias Harris? Yeah. He's, he's playing big time right now. Yeah. Do you trust him in the fourth quarter? I don't know. Against, yeah. Against a team in the playoffs? Yeah. They're selling Wolf tickets. They're not as good as being as advertised right now. They should be around where the Wizards and them. I think I'll put them in that category. Right. I mean, the Wizards record is 10 and 9. Pistons is 12 and 6. In a couple weeks, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but with war being out, man, it's definitely gonna hurt them. Yeah. What about Milwaukee Bucks? Right now, they got them ranked 16th. 16th. This ESPN rankings, y'all. So again, you know. So you buying or they selling wolf tickets? Um I think they're doing better. Selling wolf tickets, like, what's the thing like? Are they just an average team, basically? Yeah, Southern Wolf tickets is like, yeah, man, I'm not buying it. I think. So you buying? They selling Wolf tickets? Yeah, I think they're better. I think they're better than how they're playing. Okay, all right. They, yeah. I, I mean, we were just here talking about them a couple weeks ago with Blesso's trade yeah. and everything, but you know they've been losing a couple games. So let's see. But I, I think right now they're selling Wolf tickets. They are definitely a lot better than what they playing. Will they pick it up? I believe so. I think you know. Okay. They definitely would be a lot better and get a lot better than what they are. So we'll see what happens in a couple weeks. Jabari, you know? when is Jabari Parker coming back? I don't know. I don't know, but I won't even count on him. You know what I mean? I don't count on players that always get hurt. Now the game of the the game of the night, which would be tonight's game, is your two boys. Uh, uh, Sixers versus Cleveland. Sixers versus Cleveland. Everybody want to watch this matchup with Ben Simmons going up against his comparison. Yeah, his comparison in LeBron James. So who you got in that game? Um, I think the Cleveland going to win, but I, I'm going to root for my Sixers as yeah. hard as possible. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I just hear you say I'm going to root for my Sixers or are you going to root for the Sixers? You put my sixes? You a 76ers fan now? Huh? Uh, huh? Huh? Don't stutter. Don't yeah, stutter. Yeah. What? That's the process. 
He trusts the process. He didn't cross over. He's a 76 er fan. I still OKC fan. You still an OKC fan? All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right, we'll see what happens. But, you know, um, Philly is looking good. Cleveland going to win tonight. They're they on a roll. But I think it's going to be a competitive game. I don't think Cleveland has an answer for Joel Embiid, though. So if Joel Embiid come in there and play like he's been playing and do his thing. Last game, he was sick. He said he had a – his head, he had a real bad headache. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. So, you know, we'll see what happens. And Ben Simmons might – he's questionable. Ben Simmons is questionable. Oh, I ain't know that. Ben Simmons is questionable. Well, I know he didn't play the last game, so is it his ankle again? Ben Simmons? His foot. No, I think he's some. He got a little something in his elbow. On his elbow? All right, all right. All right, he good, he good. All right, now in other news in regards to the NBA, uh, what's, what else has been going on? Um, Parker's coming back for the Spurs. That's some good news for the Spurs. I mean, right now they're 12 and 7. Parker coming back this week, that's going to help him. But the question really is, my man, my favorite player, when is he coming back? Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. They still took him out a couple weeks, so we'll They've see. Been the They've been saying that for the whole season, but – the team has been holding it down, though. So I will give them that. They 12 and 7 right now without they two, two of their star players and Parker and also um and their best player, um, Kawhi Leonard. So it's not hurting them that much because when you got a hell of a coach like they do, he know how to come up with schemes and put things together. Now, some very, very sad news. Derek Rose. Let's talk about that. I think I don't know. Now, for those who don't know, Derrick Rose has been away from the team right now for the past few days, while he's thinking about his basketball future. And what that means is he's thinking about retirement. He knows he doesn't have it in him no more to play eighty games. And even in Cleveland, they're not even asking him to play eighty games. They're not even asking him to play all those minutes. But once it went down, Isaiah Thomas, you know, a bigger role came about for Derrick Rose and. His body's just not up for it, man. So right now he's at home thinking, contemplating about his future, whether he wants to come back or not. I think he's going to retire. Um, it's hard to come back from those injuries that he had. Um, it's sad to see a player of that caliber um, get, you know, get his career ended because of injuries so early. But, um, yeah, I think it's time for him to go, man. I saw it last year when he played for my Knicks. He couldn't guard nobody. I mean, he couldn't make a cut move to the left or the right because he was scared. I think he was still able knee. to play in the NBA. I mean, he could. It's, but the thing Last is, the, the thing is, is it, can he play? Yeah. Can he score? Yeah. Can he play defense? No. no. That was a problem. Like, you can't be a point guard in the league and not play any defense. I mean, you got to play a a little bit of defense and Derrick Rose, he just can't make the cuts from left and right. So it was just a pretty it was pretty tough for him, man. What else? What else going on in basketball news? Um nothing really. All right. Lonzo Ball is when he's stepping stuff up, he's stuff his stuff up. Lonzo Ball. Man, we almost did a show without talking about Lonzo Ball, right? Um I mean, they was talking about right now if today they was to start the old rookie team, or he wouldn't even make the cut. That's how bad he's playing. Is he getting better? Let's see. But right now, the Lakers, their record is 8-11. and 11. They got them ranked 24. Um, that's definitely not good right now for the Lakers. So we see. Another team I'm surprised is on the Clippers, man. They also lost like eight in a row, seven in a row. I'm surprised, man. Doc, I don't think Doc Rivers is going to survive the all-star break. I think they might let him go before the All-Star break. I mean, he's a respectable guy, without a doubt. And will he get another another opportunity? Yeah, I believe so. But I think in L.A., I think it's a done deal for him. He should just walk away now, you know, get a little rest, and then in the offseason, wait for that right package, and then come right, come right back and play. I mean, coach, you know what I mean? So, But, yeah, I, I feel bad for him. That team is pretty bad. I mean, they lost Beverly for the whole year. They lost that other point guard they brought in from overseas for a couple weeks. Um, they just not living up to the hype. Lou Williams, um, their backup point guard, he's he's good, but he's not a starter. 
you know, he's a backup. He's not going to give you, you know, but but 20 minutes a game. You ask him to play 30 plus minutes, you want you going to end up getting him hurt and now you ain't going to have no point guards. You're going to look like that Alabama team with three players on the court. He's not really even a point guard. He really just like to score. Right? Yeah, yeah, so he's yeah, but you know, he's a combo guard. So he 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 want to shoot and he can shoot. He could play. He scored. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we'll see what's going on. And what else? What I was about to say? Oh, I don't mean to say I told you so, but I told you so. Uh oh. What you, you told me so about? You told me that the Lakers <laughs> and the Suns were going to be better than the Nuggets. I did. I remember us having a long argument, not so much about the Suns, but well, definitely well, about the Lakers. I definitely thought the Lakers would, would be a better team than the Nuggets. Um, you proved me wrong. I didn't realize Nuggets. And about the Sixers. I proved you wrong. Well, the you ain't proved me wrong just yet. I think almost. Almost. But, I, yeah. You, you said that you said that Lonzo Ball was better than Ben Simmons. Did I say that? You was like, when I said, who you take, Lonzo Ball or Ben Simmons? And I said, Ben Simmons. And you and you looked at me like I was crazy. I did. I, matter of fact, I do remember that conversation. I said, yep, I will take Ball. I take that back. I mean, I got caught in the hype. I thought this dude Ball was like the new man, the new thing coming. But Simmons, you know, Simmons... My only issue with Simmons was what I saw in LSU. I saw somebody who didn't put in 100%, quit. Then I saw that documentary they did on Showtime where he didn't even want to go to college. He wanted to go straight to the pros. So I kind of understood a little bit of that attitude. But you can't go on the court and not give 100% and let your brothers down or your teammates down. So that's why I was a little, it's a little, I was a little hard bent on giving Simmons some credit, but Watching him play, man. That he looks he, he, he gets that rebound, he looks so fast. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he, not even like six eight. He's more like six eleven, almost yeah, seven foot. And still growing. Yeah. And still growing. So that that could be dangerous. So yeah. Right now, definitely Simmons. I'll give you that. My bad. I definitely was out of pocket on that one. I'm gonna do 20 pushes when the show is over. All right, so let's get to the top five, all right? Top five rivalries um, in sports history or, you know, not sports history, but who you think, uh, you know, got the most rivalries right now. What's, what's your top five, champ? Uh, Lakers versus Celtics. I think that kind of, like, brought back to life basketball. Okay. Um, Bulls versus Pistons. Bulls versus Pistons. Okay. Um, now, when you're talking Bulls versus Pistons, what teams you talking about? You talking about when Isaiah Thomas and them was playing, yeah. Jordan and them, okay. The Jordan rules, okay. Or whatever. All right. Michigan State versus Ohio. Wait, wait, no. Michigan versus Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a big one, and they had a big, big game this past weekend. Okay. Oklahoma City versus Golden State. OKC and Golden State. You think that's a rivalry? I think they they've been going at each other for a long time. Now they recently played, and OKC put it on them. Yeah. So that's how I was like, damn OKC. This is how I need y'all playing. But, okay. And who's your last one? Duke versus North Carolina. Duke versus North Carolina. Okay, I'll give you that. All right, here are my five top rivalries. I agree with you, Duke and North Carolina. That's definitely on my top five. I grew up as a North Carolina fan watching them play all the time. Um, or, um, Alabama and Auburn, I got them as another rivalry. They always go at it, and they had a hell of a game this past weekend. New York Net. Oh, excuse me, New York Yankees versus Boston Red Sox. That's another rivalry in baseball. I mean, when they play, I don't care if you're a fan of another team, you are going to watch the Yankees versus the Red Sox. That's just a team that you want to watch. Um, another one is the Redskins versus the Cowboys. That's another rivalry. Um, and then also the Knicks, and I got two teams, the Knicks versus Indiana, and then the Knicks versus the Heat. They always have big rivalries playing coming up. All right, so those are my top five robberies. Let us know what are your top five robberies. All right. Now, before we go, we definitely want to give a shout out to our sponsors for this society. Again, you can catch them on 509 Main Street, Laurel, Maryland, phone number 301-483-3668. Or catch them on the website, footagesociety.com. Don't forget the 10% discount code, Who You Think Sports. All right. Any last words, champ? Guys, Radio on Fire, man, broadcast over close to 300,000 viewers, man, per month. 
All right, so if you want to advertise your product, you know, you want a little commercial or whatever, just make sure you reach out to them so you can figure out the rates. Radioonfire.com, man. Let's support each other, man. That's all we got. Us is us. I'm out of here. Trey Verdejo, I represent the old school. And I'm Destin Verdejo, and I represent the new wave. Who you think sports? Peace. Peace.